In this video, we will cover the Media Access Control Protocol employed by Ethernet CSMA CD. So the MAC protocol employed by Ethernet goes by the name CSMA CD. We are also adding this term one persistent to it. Lot of terms, what do they mean? Let's see one by one. CS stands for Career Sense. What does it mean? Basically, listen before your talk. Carrier in a channel, if you see any signal, the voltage level, this signal is called a carrier. So carrier sense is you are checking whether the channel is busy or not. If it is busy, that means someone else is using the channel, a polite user will wait, will not talk. Of course, many people don't do this listen before talk. But if you want a efficient and a fair protocol, it is very important to do this carrier sensing. MA here stands for multiple access. This is arising because we are dealing with number of nodes. That is, we are trying to control access to the media. That is where the media access control is coming into play. That is what this term refers to. Before we see CD, let's see what this one persistent means. So here is a transmission that is going on in the air. So this is a packet transmission that is going on in the air and it lasts from let's say 0 to t seconds. A user got a packet at this particular time, some interval in between 0 and t. Now when you are doing carrier sensing, you know that the channel is busy because there is an ongoing transmission. What you should do is definitely wait till the end of the current packet transmission and then the question is should you transmit or not. One persistent means you are permitted to transmit right away. In other words, you transmit with probability 1 as soon as the current transmission ends. You could also have a scheme where instead of one persistent, you could do p persistent where you use this probability p to decide whether or not you should transmit. So that is p persistent. Ethernet Mac employs one persistent. What do you think is wrong with using one persistent? Naturally, if multiple users have to transmit during the current packet transmission time apart from you, you are all going to collide because all of you will start transmitting right after this transmission ends and you are all going to collide. So this is a given if there were multiple users waiting for the current transmission to end. So that's not a good feature. Now you must be wondering, Ethernet, why does it employ this one persistent? This is a very greedy behavior and how can it do well? So this suspense we will resolve by the end of this particular video. Just wait. So let's move on to this term, collision detection. What does this mean? So because Ethernet employs one persistence, as I have mentioned, let's say there is a current transmission going on. You want to send, someone else wants to send and both of them will wait for the end of the current packet and start transmission here and they are going to collide. So this is a collision. Now this packet could be a rather large packet which will last for a certain time. Let's say this duration is 10 t seconds. So this is the duration which is t seconds. But it doesn't take that much time to detect collision. Naturally, you may be able to detect collision right here. So there is really no reason for you to continue to keep transmission, transmitting this packet till the end of the packet. So if there are simultaneous talk, if you stop talking right away, as soon as you see there is a collision, you are going to reduce wastage. So this duration from here till here, this duration you can save if you did collision detection. So it's a very useful feature to have. We will anyway see more of collision detection shortly. So now that we understand what these terms are, one persistent is the right to transmit as soon as the current transmission ends. Carrier sensing is listening before talking and collision detection is about detecting a collision at the earliest possible so as to avoid wastage. Now the CSMA CD MAC is applicable for this bus topology naturally because everyone is sharing this wire. 
it is applicable to the star topology only in shared mode that is this link is a half duplex link so again let me emphasize that the current ethernet uses the star topology but it is a full duplex ethernet so the csma cd does not come into play current ethernet does not need a mac protocol these were the earlier versions of ethernet that used so it is still important to understand the ethernet protocol for historical reasons many of the later protocols are actually derived from this particular protocol for example the wifi protocol is also called csma but it is called ca we are not going to cover it in this course but as i said understanding ethernet will go a long way in understanding other protocols another point i wish to make here is going forward whatever explanation i'm going to give i'll use some numbers these are all applicable to 10 megabits per second ethernet though the concepts could be applicable to any ethernet that uses csma cd since collision detection is the big feature we are adding let's understand this in a little bit more detail so what are the cases under which collision occurs remember we are dealing with one persistent csma i claim there are three cases try to think of these three cases the first is rather a straight forward case for example there is a transmission happening on the channel and there are multiple arrivals during this duration all of them are going to wait for the transmission to end and because it is one persistent they will attempt transmission right after this and they are going to collide this can be a rather rare case but it is still possible that two arrivals happen on an idle channel at the same time so both nodes will transmit and then they are going to collide the third case is a bit tricky i claim that two stations attempting transmissions at different times on an idle channel can also collide how can this happen what characteristic of the channel can be responsible for this propagation delay so this figure explains it in action so we have these four nodes n1 n2 n3 n4 connected to the ethernet and let's just assume that they are separated by distance x and let's also assume that t is the time it takes for the signal to propagate distance x now when node n1 begins transmission at time 0 for this first bit to propagate over this ethernet it's going to take some time so it is going to reach n2 only after time t and it is going to reach n3 only at time 2t now if you see n3 it has a packet to transmit let's say t over 2 and at that time when it sends the channel it did see that the channel is idle because it has not it received the first bit of n1 which doesn't come until 2t so it will assume that the channel is idle and it will begin transmission and as you can see this transmission will collide with n1's transmission so n1 and n3 are transmitting at different times but still their transmissions are colliding If you also notice each of the different nodes are detecting collisions at different times for example n3 is able to detect collision at this time when it receives n1 signal and at this time n1 still hasn't detected the collision it is detecting collision later when it receives n3 signal at this particular time whereas n2 could detect much earlier because it is in between n1 and n3 so it detected collision at this particular position well actually you cannot quite detect collision with just one bit it does take for you to receive certain bits to detect collision so this is being indicated by this but as soon as you detect collision both the transmitters are going to stop transmission so even though this could be a very large packet it would have gone on but since they have detected collision they are stopping the transmission at this particular point and after this point they send the jamming signal both of them that is both the transmitters a bit more detail on collision detection this collision detection is typically done by the hardware as i mentioned before the sender as it is transmitting on the link it also receives and compares it with what was being sent if they don't match it detects that there is a collision 
This propagation delay as part of collision detection can significantly impact efficiency. Now if the propagation delay was large, would the efficiency be better or less and why? So the longer the propagation delay, the more time it will take for nodes to detect whether the channel is idle or busy and they will start transmission because they will think it is idle and this leads to higher chances of collision. Now if you have a network diameter of length L, that is the maximum distance between any two hosts AB is given by L, what is the worst case delay of detecting collision? That's right, one round trip time. For example, A send the frame. It takes some time for these bits to reach B. So this is one way propagation delay. And let's say just before the bits reached B, it sensed that the channel was idle. So B also transmitted and it is going to take some time for these bits to reach a and this is the one round tip time, twice the propagation delay. So as soon as a collision is detected, all senders who are responsible for the collision send what is called a jamming signal which is of 32 bits. Why such a jamming signal? If you remember the frame structure of Ethernet, there is a 64 bit preamble followed by the header. Suppose A were to send a frame, the first bit reached B at this particular time and prior to that B sends the channel to be idle and it started its own transmission. So this happens somewhere in the preamble. Now preamble is used for synchronization and this is what helps other nodes to even receive data. So you have to send the preamble, you cannot stop in between. And if B were to stop right after transmitting the preamble, which is 64 bits, so it would send the preamble, so this is kind of going to the other end A, basically A is going to receive only 64 bits. Now this is typically not enough for A to detect a collision, it needs an additional bits, so you send additional 32 jamming bits so that A can detect the collision reliably. Basically, jamming extends the frame of B so that A can detect collision properly. We talked about this before. I mentioned earlier that Ethernet frame sizes have to have a minimum size of 64 bytes or 512 bits. Of this, you can permit 46 bytes of payload and 18 bytes of Ethernet header. 46 bytes of payload is higher layer data like IP. What if this higher layer sent a payload data that is less than 46 bytes? In this case, you have to pad that payload till it reaches 46 bytes. By padding, I mean you add redundant zeros, dummy zeros at the end, such that the Ethernet frame size, including the header, reaches 64 bytes. Now, why do we have such a restriction on frame size? This has to do again with collision detection. So look at this figure and tell me why do we have a minimum frame size restriction in Ethernet. If a host has to detect a collision of the packet that it has sent, it has to transmit for at least one round trip time. And this round trip time for 2500 meter long cable with four repeaters turns out to be about 51.2 microseconds and at 10 Mbps this turns out to be 512 bits. Suppose node A has only 100 bits of data to send so it started the transmission and node B which is at the other end of the network listened to the channel it found it to be idle just before the first bit came and it also trans started transmitting and for this packet to reach A this duration turns out to be 51.2 microseconds in bits it corresponds to only 512 bits. Now node A after it transmits the 100 bits here if it were to stop then it will not see this bits colliding bits from B and thereby it will assume that everything went fine with its transmission because it did not see any collisions during the period of 100 bits. This won't do so you have to continue to transmit for at least 512 bits so that you can detect any collision that is going to impact the transmitted frame. 
While we are here, let me also emphasize that the maximum number of hosts that Ethernet can support is only 1024 hosts within a collision domain. If there are more nodes than this, that means the load becomes high and the chances of collisions becomes more. 